And a very good evening, everybody. I'm John Cole. Coyotes have named a new boys basketball coach at sophomore coach Quinn McLaughlin, the former Sydney boys basketball standout, was the head coach of the Plentywood Cats. He played his college basketball at the University of Montana Western. He's a phys ed teacher at Williston High School and is also a coach in the track team. He takes over for David Lundine, who stepped down after the season to return to his native Minnesota. The last Sydney coach Williston hired was Gress Jones, and that turned out real well. As the rest of the WDA coaches, we wish the new head coach of the Coyotes the very best. Coyote girls soccer team opened their season tonight at home against St. Mary's, trying to begin the new year with a win. Let's go to Legends Field. First shot of the game gets in. Junior Gracie Rieger is going to find the end of the net. One zip Saints. Then a penalty shot for senior Monica Gardner. That goes in as well. Two zip just like that. But Makaya Klein with a breakaway. Emily Shockley, good all-round athlete, is going to knock it away. And the Coyotes shut out St. Mary's the rest of the way. That's a very good effort, but could not quite score. So a good opener. St. Mary's gets Williston 2-zip, but they obviously played well. Now, for the last 42 years, we've been asking the head coach of the basketball Tetons to give us his pick for the Final Four tonight, Alex Herman, on one of the great sporting events in our nation. How about North Carolina State? Huh? Holy smokes, looking like, you know, maybe going to end up maybe being in the NIT or wh or whatever it is and then just kind of a lot of times of what of what you got what you try and preach to, you know, to any team is that uh, you know, if you play your best game, your best basketball at the end of the year, you just never know what what could happen. They go to the ACC tournament win five in a row and in five days or is it four in four days, whatever it was, and then boom, now they're here all the way in the final four, just crazy. Um but I think it's, it's going to be really fun watching those two post players go against each other you know for there's been a lot of a lot of talk and a lot of push now in uh, you know last handful of years of this uh, you know kind of positionless basketball and that sort of stuff and you know now you're looking here at the final four teams and you've basically got four teams that all do a lot of stuff right out of their post. Um, and so it's kind of, you know, always refreshing where you can just, you can take a look at anything, at anybody, um, and it's just all about, you know, finding the finding the kids that kind of fit what you want to be able to do and, and then being able to just build, a, you know, build stuff around them. But I think that'll be really good in watching Burns and watching Eni kind of going against each other um, and seeing just kind of what happens there. I um, Purdue seems like they are... You know, maybe not the team of the of the past few years that a lot of people have talked about, where they've just struggled kind of getting out of that first weekend and stuff. And uh, they seem like they're playing some very good basketball right now. But obviously, so is NC State. So you got to go with who then? I think probably go with Purdue. All right, wonderful matchup, Alabama and UConn. What do you think? I think. <laughs> UConn seems like they're about head and shoulders above everybody they've played so far this year. I mean, they, uh, um, as far as for trying to go back to back, they really look like they're a team that is just completely on a mission, you know. And kind of like that, it was that first weekend, or maybe, or maybe it was uh, um, on that uh, that third round game when uh, um, when Hurley had just mentioned about just blowing people out of this tournament. And I mean, that's really what they've done. It's just been very, very. They seem like they're laser focused right now. Uh, but uh, but Alabama's been fun to watch as well too, and it's. You know, it's always it's always awesome that a uh, person from North Dakota, when you can watch a kid from North Dakota playing at that biggest stage and really doing some very phenomenal things. That's been a lot of fun watching him, watching uh, Grant play as well too. All righty, folks. We like Purdue and UConn to win with UConn cutting down the nets on Monday. Back-to-back -back national champs. We'll see. Busy time for the Teton baseball team. They got blown out by Miles 22 to five. And then they lost the nightcap, even though they had it tied up at 2-2, 9-5. Two, two, but some good news from the Teton softball team. They got beaten game one, but won the nightcap 3-2. That's their biggest win in quite a few seasons. Let's take a timeout. 